After the Second World War ended in 1945, Britain emerged victorious but bankrupt, and the next 20 years witnessed significant political and social changes in British society and its place in the world. Notably, nation building in the 1945 to 1951 period was intrinsically linked to the redefinition and reassertion of Britain's status in a radically changed world order. What were therefore some of the political and social changes, and how did Britain adapt to its post-war international role? It is important to assess the nature of Britain's new global role, how Britain struggled to redefine a new place for itself on an international scene dominated by the superpowers of the Cold War, as well as the significance of Britain's attitude towards the budding European coal and steel community. Finally, it is important to explore the evolving relationship between Britain and its colonies in a period which marked the beginning of the end of the British Empire. To begin with, Britain in 1945, both at home and at an international scale, faced the challenges of post-war reconstruction. The first step in the recreation of the European family must be a partnership between France and Germany, declared Churchill in Zurich in 1946. Until the 1960s, Britain's hope of reconstituting and preserving its empire kept it apart from the European Economic Community, or EEC. Already during the war, important innovations such as the Beveridge Report of 1942, which aimed to provide a comprehensive system of social insurance from cradle to grave, or the Education Act of 1944, which provided free secondary education for all pupils, signaled the desire for reform and change across many sections of the British public. This resulted in the landslide Labour victory of July 1945. Labour then instituted a radical program of nationalisation in transport and heavy industry, as well as the establishment of a free uh, national health service, or NHS, but the war had stripped Britain of virtually all its foreign final financial resources, and the country had built up sterling credits, which were debts owned to other countries that would have to be paid in foreign currencies, which amounted to several billion pounds. The economy was in disarray, and with nothing to export, Britain had no way to pay for imports or even for food. This forced the government to continue with rationing and controls throughout the late 1940s, which in turn provoked increasing opposition in the country, as people chaffed under the restrictions and shortages. Indeed, industries needed to switch quickly from wartime to peacetime product if um, the expert drive was to be met. And while rationing was used in the short term through nationalization, the government hoped to maintain full employment in the long term. Indeed, through what was called the common ownership, the means of production, distribution and exchange, labor succeeded in taking into public ownership 20% of economic enterprises, employing up to 2 million of the force. And finally, by 1950, the balance of payments was in surplus, meaning that Britain no longer needed martial aid. Britain also faced the manifold dilemmas occasioned by the end of empire and tried to recast itself through the emerging politics of the Cold War. Indeed, the emergence of a state of Cold War between the US-dominated capitalist West and the USSR-led communist East the two forming what were known as the two superpowers of the post-war world, initially gave a renewed impetus to British imperialism. In the aftermath of the war, Churchill adopted a very aggressive anti-communist stance that saw him cooperate with US President Franklin D. Roosevelt, as well as his successor Harry S. Truman. And by 1946, the pretense of having any civilized relationship with the Soviets was up. Churchill's Iron Curtain speech condemned the Soviet Union's policies in Europe on the 5th of March, and this had a massive influence on the Truman Doctrine, as well as the Marshall Plan, which served to further solidify the UK's relationship with the US, thus creating a united front against the Soviet Union and the communism it championed. Moreover, Britain had emerged from the war as a strong ally to the USA and liked to think of itself as an equal partner, referred to as a special relationship. 
but Britain was, in practice, limited by its financial and military dependence on the USA. Notably, the U.S. Marshall Plan of 1948-52 provided Britain with $3.3 billion of support. And Britain also relied on the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the NATO of 1949, and the U.S. nuclear capacity, despite developing its own nuclear weapons in 1952 for defense. Britain cooperated with the USA in the Korean War, but despite a UN mandate, the command was American, notably the formation of a Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, or CETO, in 1954, bringing together Australia, France, New Zealand, Pakistan, the Philippines, Thailand, Britain, and USA in the wake of the Korean War, was what could be considered an acknowledgement of the need of an American-led protective alliance. On the international front, Macmillan stated in 1960 that Britain was blowing through Africa, signaling the end of colonial rule by European powers and the move towards independence. Between 1947 and 1965, Britain divested herself of her empire, and the period witnessed prolonged debates about the future of Britain's role in the world, a debate that was greatly exacerbated by the Suez Crisis of 1956-57, during which Britain realized her great imperial power years were past her. Alongside decolonization was the Cold War, during which, once again, Britain sought to maintain its position alongside the US as a major nuclear power, exploding, exploding its first atomic bomb in 1952. But Cold War realities demonstrated Britain's relative decline as an independent world power once again. Overall, post-war Britain was able to witness unprecedented changes eventually a dramatic rise in prosperity, living standards, as well as radical initiatives in health, welfare provision, and in education until 1965. But most importantly, Britain was able to witness the loss of an empire and the need to adapt to a new international role. Indeed, the year 1965, with Winston Churchill's passing, seems to symbolize the passing of an old order. The previous year, Harold Wilson and the Labour Party had won the general election. After a decade of conservative rule, it is questionable to which extent Wilson's new progressive and reforming government during the swinging 60s changed British society.